<clears throat> Song of Solomon. Chapter 6. Thank God, thank God there are some that know where the Lord is in this hour. We're finding today that there's few, very few places where you can go where you can really find the presence of God, where you can find the Lord. But thank the Lord that there is a remnant. God has a remnant. So, Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 1. Whither is thy beloved gone, O thou fairest among women? Whither is thy beloved turned aside, that we may seek him with thee? She says, My beloved is gone down into his garden, to the beds of spices to feed in the gardens, and to gather lilies. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. He feedeth among the lilies. This is a tremendous revelation that God has given to, Song, to Solomon that is in parable form. But the Spirit of God gives us understanding. Even as Jesus said to his disciples, these are things for you to know, but for them it is not to know. So, this truth, the revelation that God has for us in this is, he is feeding among the lilies. Now, first of all, she says he's down in his garden. Well, if you look in the scriptures, you find that we are his garden, right? God's people are his garden. And so, if he's down in his garden, you don't need to be looking out to find God, right? Jesus said the kingdom of God is not in observation, it's within you. There's a lot of folks today looking for the Lord here and there, trying to find Him in some geographical location. Well, that's the furthest things from the truth. You don't have to go seeking for the Lord, going to meeting to meeting, trying to find Him out there. No, He's in His garden. He's down in His garden. You are His garden. Second point is that he's feeding among lilies. Now, why is lilies significant? Because in the scripture, Jesus says, consider the lilies, how they grow. They don't toil, they don't spin. Now, when Jesus said this to his disciples, he was talking about in contrast to those around them that were worrying and fretting. He said, don't be like these people that are worrying what they're going to wear, what they're going to eat. He said, don't be like them. Your heavenly Father knows what you have need of. And so he said to them, consider the lilies, how they grow. They don't toil, they don't spin. And, and Jesus went on to say, they were clothed with more beauty, more splendor than all the glory of Solomon. So we need to learn what God is telling us here. Consider the lilies, how they grow. How they grow. They don't toil, they don't spin, they don't make their clothing. They don't work. You understand? They grow gracefully in the sunshine, in the rain, in the soil. They just grow. And uh, Paul or Peter said, we need to grow in grace. 
We don't frustrate the grace of God. We just grow. We're, we're the planting of the Lord, right? And we're, we're trees of righteousness. And so we're supposed to be just growing if we're in the right elements. We need the rain of the Spirit. We need the, the sunshine of truth and the sunshine of, of the Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to give us what we have need of to grow. And the third point is that not only is he down in his garden feeding among the lilies, but also in verse 2, he is going into his garden not just to feed, but to gather lilies. So he's in his garden doing two things. He's feeding and he's hand-picking. You getting that? He's choosing. He's hand-picking. The choice lilies. The ones that learned how to grow. The ones that don't fret and worry. You understand? The scripture says without faith it's impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is, that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you're fretting and worrying what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, where you're going to live, if you're worried about all these things, then you're not trusting in the Lord. You're not growing in his grace. And you're certainly not going to be one of the ones the Lord picks to be his bride. Many are called, few are chosen. And so we have all these lilies that are there and the Lord is feeding them. But there are some that are ready to be picked. I said to my pastor one day, I said, I said, the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm fine-tuning you. I said, Lord, I said, Pastor, what does that mean? And he said, cheer up, son. He says, he's picked you. So it's one thing to be fed by the master, right? To be being fed by him. It's another thing when the Lord looks down and he picks you out of all the other lilies. And so what is he going to do with that lily? Well, without question... Just like we do. What do we do when we gather flowers or lilies? What do we do? We gather them and put them in a vase, right? And we put them in the house, right? Put them in the center of the table. Well, what's God going to do with the lilies that he's handpicking and choosing and he's placing into, as it were, a vessel? Where is God going to put those chosen vessels, uh, lilies? Those, those ones in his kingdom that have learned how to grow. Those ones that don't fret and worry. He's going to bring them into his father's house. And going to put them on display for the guests. See? When, when you go out into your garden, you put the flowers uh, in a vase, in a beautiful vase, and bring it in your house, and bring it in the house. Are you doing that just for you? No. You're doing that for not only your family, but you're doing that for maybe some guests that are coming. And you put these beautiful arrangement of flowers on the table. That's what God is saying here. He's saying, you are my planting. You're my garden. And I'm down in my garden and I'm hand-picking lilies. Well, some are not ready to be hand-picked. Some are not ready to be plucked. And so God is feeding them, getting them ready to be picked. But we know that in the process of growing, some die. Yeah. Some you know, die because they, for whatever reason, bugs, whatever. And then some don't grow as big as others and beautiful as others. For whatever reason now, that's between you and the Lord. Why you may not be growing so beautiful. Why you may not be so gracious as a person in the Lord. And so I believe the, the more gracious we are, the more we have a heart of a servant, the more we are growing in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. So, and there are many different factors why the lily 
you know, hasn't, hasn't grown. Now notice, there's not just lilies in his garden. There's also spices. And I'm sure there's other flowers. So what are you in the Lord? What type of a flower are you? Um, are you one of the bugs in the garden? Are you one of the tares in the garden? There are tares in the garden too. There are, there are weeds. That's another reason why the lilies might not grow because a weed might try to choke out the life. Folks, we need to be weeding our garden, right? We need to be weeding his garden. We are his and he is ours. But if we're his garden, we need to be making sure we keep the garden weeded. Keep the tares out. And those tares come from the seed of Satan. And it doesn't take a whole lot of lies to get tares growing in the garden. So we need to be busy in the garden, making sure we get all the bad seed out, get rid of all the tares, all the, uh, all the weeds, make sure we're getting plenty of sunshine from the Spirit, from the Word, make sure we're getting plenty of uh, rain, um, and make sure we're growing in the Lord. Um, and last but not least, but did you know that Canaan's land was watched over by the Lord? The Lord told the children of Israel, he said, I'm going to watch over this land. I'm going to make it grow. I'm going to keep a watchful eye over it. Uh, did you know that the fruit that came out of Canaan's land? My, I mean, grapes so big it took two men to carry between their shoulders. My, my, my. Grapes as big as our, our watermelons today. Grapes as big as our, our pumpkins today. Amen? Praise God. So, obviously something's wrong in our land today if, if our gardens are not producing uh, very well. But spiritually, if we're not producing fruit, it might be that we're not, there might be something wrong with the soil of our heart, right? Might be a bad seed that's gotten in there. Might be a weed. Might be a tear. Um, but we need to be like the lily and grow in grace. Amen? Remember, he's in his garden and he's feeding and he's gathering. We see in the book of Revelation chapter 12, he gathers the man-child, the overcomer, the bride of Christ, to his throne. But then he goes and he feeds the church in the wilderness. Don't be left behind. If you're left behind, yes, you will be nourished. Yes, you will be fed. But there are some that are getting ready to be gathered, hand-picked chosen out of hallelujah out of the all the lilies god is handpicking praise god god bless you